LCA um, is a project um, that is a part of the mental health literacy portfolio at BC Mental Health and Substance Use Services. Uh, and we do have a number of different activities uh, and projects underway that are in the technology area and relate to the needs of youth and young adults who have mental health and substance use concerns. So while I'm going to focus exclusively on this one piece of work that we've done, uh, we do have a number of other things underway, including something that you might have seen in the Global Mail today, which is called MindShift, which is an app uh, for youth around uh, managing anxiety. It's CBT for anxiety uh, in an app, and it was named one of the top 10 innovations in apps uh, in Canada in the Global Mail today. So we're feeling pretty good about that one as well. But here's my challenge. Uh, the first thing I want to say about it is that it is a collaborative project. Uh, a number of people have worked on my check, including folks from the Fraser Health Authority and from BC Mental Health and Substance Use Services. So two teams have been involved in the development and the staging of this project over the past three years. And it's been a really fun project to do, uh, and it's been quite innovative in terms of uh, reaching out and doing more and more different things to reach to youth and adults. Uh, some of the basics around why we would do this piece of work are that the evidence is clear that mental health and substance use disorders begin in youth and, and often in childhood and young adulthood, uh, and that this population um, is really important in terms of mental health and substance use being a primary health concern. And we're wanting to reach out into that population in particular with these early intervention messages. So just keep in mind when I'm talking about my check, I'm talking about early intervention. I'm not really talking about downstream treatment as much as let's focus on uh, getting uh, help early, uh, getting resources early, and reaching out to provide information as soon as possible. So the importance of early intervention, I think all of us who work in mental health and substance use know uh, that young people often lack the knowledge of early symptoms of mental health challenges and when, how, and from whom to seek appropriate health, help. And um, the Mercury study validated that and also that over 60% of young people affected by mental health concerns do not seek professional help. But we know where they are, they're online. Uh, and they are looking at health information in increasing numbers and trying to find information and trying to find answers and solutions to the experiences that they're having. Uh, the majority of young people are seeking information or assistance from friends, from family, and from the internet. And of course, identifying issues early, as I said already, is really critical to dealing with uh, mental health and substance use issues sooner, and perhaps preventing things from getting worse. And so that's a bit of context, as I said, for what my check is all about. So some of you may have seen the site. I'm hoping you have. Has anybody looked at MindCheck or how to put up your hand if you had a look at it? Good, thanks. Uh, so MindCheck.ca is an interactive website that encourages early recognition and connection to mental health and substance use resources for BC youth and young adults. And the catchment group is 13 to 25. Uh, we wanted to keep it a little bit broad, and the resources reflect that. Uh, and as I said, it is a collaboration with Fraser Health uh, we see mental health and substance use and uh, other partners. Uh, just a little bit on the history of MindCheck. Um, it was started as a little website out in Fraser South uh, through the Fraser Health Authority with a team in Fraser South who had a very strong interest in prevention and early interventions for youth and young adults. And they had been doing this innovative work out there and looking at what was going on in Australia particularly and building out resources and starting to kind of go down the road of linking those resources to interventions in schools by doing uh, speak ups or speak outs where they went into schools and talked to kids. Uh, but the website was pretty small uh, and it really um, uh, needed some help to become more robust and larger and become a provincial resource. And so we became involved at uh, BC Mental Health and Substance Use Services because we had a strong interest in really reaching out to everyone in the province with these tools and making these things available so that folks everywhere in British Columbia could gain access to resources in a timely manner. So we became in the project, we became involved, we got into a partnership together, and it resulted in the relaunching of the site uh, under this new banner with the additional resources and all of the extra technology that's been loaded into it. So as I mentioned, it's a partnership, and the official launch was in January of 2012. Um, which is a year ago now, it's uh, 
interesting how time has gone by so quickly. Actually, two years almost now. Yeah, time has gone by really quickly on this one. Um, we have to um, mention also that we got into a collaboration with the Canucks for Kids Fund along the way because they um, they knew we were doing some things. They were had this awareness that over in the mental health building we had these mental health literacy projects and we were doing some online work. And they approached us and said, you know, we would really like to get involved with what we're understanding to be this innovative project. Uh, we have some folks over at the Canucks organization who really want to be involved in early intervention. They have some things that they want to say and they'd like to be a part of the MyCheck project. So we had some discussions and we agreed that our, our interests were um, mutual around the importance of talking to youth and young adults online about these issues. Uh, they had a spokesperson, Kevin Biaxa, who really wanted to get involved with the project because he uh, was a close friend with a, a fellow named Rick Rippin who had died by suicide. Um, and he'd taken his own life. And uh, they had always wanted to do this early intervention work. And Rick had wanted to do this early in intervention work. Unfortunately, he didn't get an opportunity to do that. And so they wanted to fulfill his dream of doing that work with kids by becoming involved in the project. So um, we continued down the road together. Uh, the In One Voice campaign was launched in 2012 in January. It was a social media campaign. We didn't do anything with regular media. We didn't do any kinds of uh, paper outreach or school outreach. We went straight onto uh, the internet with this one. And we invited youth all around the province to participate in posting um, their voices with regard to early intervention. So uh, come on board. Uh, we had Kevin tape a pledge that was about early awareness and intervention. And then youth from all around the province uh, logged on and did their own, um, their own narratives that we added to a collage eventually. And that was the launch of MindCheck.ca. So it was uh, pushed out purely that way. Uh, they have brought huge amounts of uh, social media to this project, which has resulted in a, a very, very broad reach that we didn't ever anticipate uh, for this project. So it sort of speaks to that piece about how do you leverage uh, social media to kind of reach out into communities that you might actually not get a message into necessarily if you didn't have access to certain types of audiences this way. So the features of mindcheck.ca, and I will say that the site has grown and changed quite a lot over the three years that we've worked on the project. As I said, it started as a small uh, website, got bigger, there's been more and more enhancements over the three years we've been working on it. But there are six primary areas where uh, the, the site offers things to, to folks. Uh, the first area is in education. So uh, the Mindcheck site educates and provides early support for the most common mental health challenges. This was our goal, was to focus on the most common mental health and substance use issues experienced by youth and adults. So there are sections on depression, on anxiety, on social anxiety, stress, substance use, including drugs and alcohol, psychosis, body image, and eating. And of course, you might ask the question about psychosis being not necessarily the most common mental health condition, but Fraser Health has quite a strong presence in the area of psychosis, and they really wanted that piece to be included on the site uh, in terms of early identification and self-identification for youth of signs and symptoms. So that um, was included. Uh, the two pieces that were added later in the enhancements were uh, social anxiety and body image and eating. Um, there was already lots on anxiety, but social anxiety is something we really wanted to have some specific resources in for you. And then also, uh, some of us on my team have a very strong vested interest in eating disorders. That's another part of my portfolio. And disordered eating is extremely common in youth populations. So we wanted to go a bit upstream and provide resources related to eating disorders from the position of body image. And many, many youth and young adults can relate to that area. And you'll see that's just a bit of information about how the site actually looks. You can't read it super well there, uh, but I encourage you to go to the site and you'll see how it's a very youth-friendly interface uh, and uh, 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 written from a perspective of health literacy to make sure the language is written at the grade six to eight level so all of you can, or most of you can access it with lots of photos and videos. The second area is self-assessment and screening tools. Um, so youth and young adults can go onto the site to take quizzes 
and explore what's going on for them. So uh, you'll see that they, there are quizzes in all of the areas that I mentioned previously, uh, and then uh, the quizzes produce results that are rated on scale, uh, and it, the, the youth receives a section called your results, what that says, what you should know, and what you can do about it. Again, very practical, step one, step two, here's some things you can do. And depending on how they uh, score themselves on the quizzes, they can then either uh, use self-help resources that they're directed to, like uh, my, the MindShift app, or uh, like our DWD online tool that we have, or like other resources that are available that are evidence-based. Or they might be encouraged to uh, use Youth in DC chat, or to uh, use telephone lines, or if they're scoring very highly, they might be encouraged to immediately contact someone and then there are some options on there. So the personalized feedback is provided based on the quiz results, and then there are the links to in additional information, self-help resources, and options for seeking support. And one of the things we did when we uh, brought the, the site to the whole province was we made sure that there were resources available for youth in every community in BC. So we did quite a lot of work with expanding the collection of resources, because as you can imagine, when it was a self-raiser site, it really only offered those types of resources. So that collection has expanded. It's linked to other databases uh, to provide resources in communities, uh, et cetera. Uh, another area, as I mentioned already, are the links to services and self-help resources, um, which uh, we carefully selected, make sure they were evidence-based, make sure the, that the links are all working, ensure that they are supported and validated. Uh, and of course, we have the Get Supports area, which is what to do if you need help now, um, how to uh, access some self-help um, tools, and then how to access someone that you might talk to, how would you go about that, who might you talk to, what would you say, very, very practical advice uh, for you to take the next step if they're seeing something that they feel they need help, some help with. Another area of the site are the fact sheets and worksheets. And these are uh, targeted towards uh, teachers, educators, parents, or other folks who might be interacting with youth and young adults. So those are available online. They're also available um, through our organization. And we get uh, many, many, many requests from, particularly from school environments, to send out the resources. Because what they're doing is they're using the site, and they're linking it to the print resources and the posters and collateral. So schools are putting the posters up, then they have the resources, and then they have the site. So we've got the three bits that are all hanging together now in terms of resources that are available around the province for you, especially, in, of course, in school environments. Uh, the, the bigger challenge that we talk about a lot are the youth that are not connected to school. And that's really the site itself, is the option for the youth who are not connected in school environments but can still gain access to everything that the site has. These are the promotional materials. These have been uh, uh, disseminated all around the province, and you'll find them in schools, community centers, libraries, and other environments where youth hang out. Uh, again, very youth friendly. And the last area is our outreach through social media channels. Uh, we've been, we believe, from a, for a for a health authority, I think, fairly brave about venturing into the social media world. Uh, we're uh, we have a YouTube presence with this work. Uh, we have Twitter, which we monitor daily uh, and are posting, and uh, Facebook and Pinterest. So we're, we're quite busy with our social media work, and we actually have a youth uh, who works in the Healthy Mental Health Resource Center who monitors all of those channels and posts regularly and interfaces with people through MindCheck who are following MindCheck um, through their Twitter accounts or who are interested in gaining access to resources. And we felt that this was a really important part of this work was having the social media presence to reach out through all the channels, many of which we established through that connection that we made with the Canucks early on in the project. So I mentioned some of the recent enhancements already, the addition of social anxiety and body image and eating quizzes, which we did in the last year or so, I believe, yeah. yeah. Um, we've updated our feedback pages, uh, which is the feedback that we uh, provide. Uh, to folks, and then uh, we developed an infographic recently, uh, which is basically tells people about MindCheck and what it does and how successful it's been and what the numbers are looking at, and we use that as a promotional tool for the site. Uh, and of course, we raise awareness that way. 
And we've got eight new videos that we've developed for each of the home page characters. You might remember at the very beginning I showed the home page. Well, each uh, on the home page are characters. And each of the characters is related to an issue or a concern, like social anxiety or eating or whatever. And if you, if you um, uh, go into that character, then it leads you into a series of information related to that. And I mean, we really uh, feel quite positive about how we've managed to leverage some uh, interesting social media and interesting online opportunities to build the site. Uh, we've also done some evaluation of the work. Uh, and we have an article that was published in a journal, um, Social Psychiatry and Psychiatric Epidemiology in 2012. Our team uh, did uh, some evaluation, which I could talk a lot about, uh, but it was published recently with lots of interesting feedback about using these types of methods. And we have a follow-on article that we submitted uh, for our year, our, uh, year on evaluation uh, and what we saw. So I'll leave it at that because I know I'm out of time.